Hi, I'm Mahesh Thapa, and today we're going to talk about the pterygopalatine fossa as seen on CT scan. There are seven entrances slash exits to the pterygopalatine fossa, and I want to show you a relatively easy way to find most of them, if not all of them. Okay, let's get started. So here we're looking at the CT scan axial images, and here is the coronal reconstruction. We're at the level of the pterygopalatine fossa. I'm not going to show you exactly where it is right now. First, I want to go over the 3D anatomy just to give you an idea of what the surface of this area looks like and how it is viewed from the external world. So let's switch over to a 3D reconstruction here. So here is a 3D version of the skull. I'm using an anatomy program called Complete Anatomy. I think it's very good for demonstrating structures like this. So I am going to rotate this just a little bit, like so, so give you an idea what I'm looking at. And as I rotate this, I'm gonna zoom up just a little bit. I'm gonna zoom up like this here. And we're going into right here is the pterygopalatine fossa. It's a little bit obscured by the zygomatic process and the mandible itself. But as we sort of look through it, we can see into the pterygopalatine fossa. So let me get rid of this mandible just to give you a little better idea of what that area looks like. So again, I'm gonna change this just a little bit. And here is the pterygopalatine fossa. And we're looking th into the pterygopalatine fossa uh, through uh, one of the known entrances or exits called the pterygomaxillary fissure uh, made by the back of the maxilla. The maxillary sinus is what you'd get into if you punched a hole through that bone. So that's the back of the maxilla. And this is the lateral pterygoid plate which is part of the sphenoid bone. So those two come and form the margins that lead into the pterygopalatine fossa from the outside. So that area, that entrance is called the uh, pterygomaxillary fissure, okay? And outside of the pterygomaxillary fissure, uh, you know, you go from this area through the pterygomaxillary fissure into the pterygopalatine fossa. The outside of that area is called the infratemporal fossa because it lives directly below the temporal lobe in the middle cranial fossa. So it's called the infratemporal fossa. So, so this area over here is the infratemporal fossa and you go through the pterygomaxillary fissure, it's a big fissure like this, and into the pterygopalatine fossa. If you notice, there's also a little opening here at the top of the pterygopalatine fossa. Well, this opening goes up right into the bottom of the eye. So let me turn this around just a little bit and see if that helps you. So that area, as you look at it, is actually this structure right here. This is the cavity of the eye, and this is the inferior aspect. So this is called the infraorbital fissure. So you already have an idea of two of the entrances slash exits into the pterygopalatine fossa as seen from the external world, if you will. Now we're gonna go back to the CT scan and find the other five entrances slash exits. So here we are. I'm gonna give you a clue to find the pterygopalatine fossa right away. And I always use this because it's something that you can hang your hat on. I'm gonna go on the coronal to probably about here. So I'm at the middle cranial fossa. And here I'm gonna go a little further back. So let's just go up. We know that this is the middle cranial fossa. This is where the temporal lobe lives. As I go inferiorly, at the medial inferior aspect of the middle cranial fossa is where you're gonna find foramen rotundum. Remember that carries V2, the maxillary nerve, along with a, a vessel, a couple of vessels, but the most important thing is V2, and that's foramen rotundum. As we go down, 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 the only entrance is right over here. You can see it on the contralateral side also, but over here, this is foramen rotundum, and that leads you directly into the pterygopalatine fossa. So if you found foramen rotundum, you fall that anteriorly, it takes you right to the pterygopalatine fossa. And let me show you where that is on. So here is the hole, sort of the inframedial aspect of your middle cranial fossa. This hole is rotundum. And as I go anteriorly, the rotundum opens up into this structure, which is your pterygopalatine fossa. 
And directly above the pterocopalatine fossa, you notice there's a big entrance to where? To the inferior aspect of the eye, right? That's what this leads to. That's what we saw on the surface rendering. That is the infraorbital fissure. And what does that look like on the axial images? So I have to go up on the axial pterocopalatine fossa. I'm going up, 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 and here is the entrance here. It's a big fissure, right? That's why it's called the inferior orbital fissure. So you found one other entrance slash exit. Now, sticking to the same area, so I always come back to my pterocopalatine fossa at the level of the foramen rotundum. Looking medially, there's a connection here to the nasal cavity right here, and that's called the sphenopalatine foramen. And sticking to the same level, coming back like this from, from the foramen, uh, in the region of the pterocopalatine fossa, you've got this structure right here. That is your vidian canal. The vidian canal is a way for stuff from the pterocopalatine fossa to communicate with the foramen lacerum or the carotid canal over here of the vascular structure. In fact, you can see it right over here very, very well. And here it is going into the carotid space. And going back again to your pterocopalatine fossa at the level of, of the foramen rotundum, I'm going to just keep going back there. That was the Vidian canal. Now more medially, it empties out actually as two separate channels here, coming from here like this. And where is that going to? It's going to a soft tissue back over here into your nasopharynx. So that's called the pharyngeal canal. This person happens to have uh, one uh, canal that's sort of bifurcates into two smaller canals, but sometimes you can just have a single canal going back there, and that's the pharyngeal canal, okay? Now, if we, t if we sort of go back to our pterocopalatine fossa, and I'm gonna go down a little bit, and so this space right here going laterally, that was what we saw from the external world in the 3D reconstruction. So this is your, uh, pterygo maxillary fissure, right? I remember that this is the maxilla, and if you punched a hole through that maxilla, you'd go right into maxillary sinus. And over here, if you look carefully, this bone is part of your sphenoid, and this indeed is your lateral pterygoid, medial pterygoid. And again, exiting laterally through the pterygo maxillary fissure, you get into the infratemporal fossa. Remember, I said the infratemporal fossa is named because right above it, boom, is your middle cranial fossa where the temporal lobe lives. So infratemporal fossa right here. From the infratemporal fossa, you gain access to the pterygopalatine fossa through the pterygomaxillary fissure. Okay, now, as we go down, just pay attention to the soft tissue area surrounded by bone. As you go further down, 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 still over here. Now, it doesn't, I don't have it go completely down. It sort of stops right there, but this little structure right here, you can imagine it's going to exit out. Let me let me show it to you on the coronal. It's this structure right here. It's going to exit out into the heart palate. So that's called the pterygopalatine canal, leading from the pterygopalatine fossa into the heart palate. So let's just review these anatomy really quickly to find the all seven entrances and exits. Again, I said the best thing to do is go to the middle cranial fossa, find your foramen rotundum. Here it is. So that's number one, foramen rotundum. Uh, going more superiorly to the bottom of the eye, infra, infraorbital fissure, inferior orbital fissure. Now going back here medially, sphenopalatine foramen. Going posteriorly into your carotid canal is going to be your vidian canal right here. And here going into your nasopharynx through this opening here is going to be your pharyngeal canal. Okay, now going laterally over here through the pterygomaxillary fissure, we have your infratemporal fossa through the pterygomaxillary fissure. And finally, if we follow the soft tissue structure directly down uh, into the heart palate, you've got the pterygopalatine canal. So that's all seven of the entrances and exits. 
Whenever you have thin slice CT scan that goes over this area, I encourage you to try to find all these structures if you can. It's not going to be easy all the time in every patient I find in pediatric population, it's a lot easier to find uh, than in the adult population, but it should not stop you from trying. If you like what you saw, please give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll bring you more educational content related to pediatric radiology and we'll see you next time. Bye.